Hello, welcome to www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk a little bit more about dodging and burning. Uh, it's basically a quick tip. I know I've talked about dodging and burning probably three times in the last year in these uh, tutorials if you follow along, but there's something really important about dodging and burning in HDR photography, and a lot of times in HDR photography you lose um, the darks and lights in your photograph where darks and lights should be because of the tone mapping process. If you over tone map it in, uh, in the shadow areas then you've pretty much lost your shadow areas where shadows are pretty important. One of those ways you can pull back those shadows and really get them working for you again in your photograph is to dodge and burn. Now I had a professor in college who told me that uh, if I wasn't happy with a print that I was working on, I was a printmaker, um, that I should take a picture of my print and bring it into Photoshop and turn it to black and white. And if I saw a lot of 50% gray, I probably needed to do something a little more with the print to make it more successful by pushing the darks a little bit or lights or what have you. And the same is true in photography. You know, I was, I was dodging burning the other day. I was like, you know, shouldn't I be doing this on a, on a black black and white layer and, and sometimes it helps to see it that way um, just like my professor told me in college so um, if, if you're gonna use this method for dodging and burning which I do suggest you at least play around with it uh, what you want to do is duplicate the background layer first so we're gonna press control or command J and then we want to desaturate this layer so we want to press control shift U or command shift U on a Mac and you see what we have here is a pretty much 50% gray photograph. So just like my old printmaking days, what do you need to do? You need to bring out some of those darks and lights a little bit more. I mean, we do have some darks here, like these areas right here are pretty dark, and these areas here are pretty light, but this area is a shadow. It's the shadow of a tree. It doesn't really look like a shadow in this picture because, yeah, I mean, you've lost it with that tone mapping. It's just, it really opened up that shadowy area and made it just like a gray value rather than a shadow. So there's, there's some things that we need to tweak here with the dodging and burning, and you know a lot of people question, well, what do you dodge and what do you burn? And you know the answer is that yeah, it's really kind of subjective as to what you want to dodge and burn. Uh, what areas do you want to make lighter? What areas do you want to make darker? That's the whole idea behind dodging and burning. Now there are some some things that you can say yes, that needs to be dodged, and yes, it needs to be burned. And one of the the things that I start with is just looking at the image and saying, okay, I was there. I saw this photograph uh, before I took it, and this area was definitely darker than this area. So, you know, during my tone mapping process, I lost that, and it's easily recoverable. So, the next thing you want to do is create a new layer, and fill this layer with 50% gray by pressing Shift F5. Now, I'm going to change that to 50% gray and press OK, and then change this to Overlay. Blending option to overlay on the 50% gray layer. Now, what that's going to do is not much right now. It basically gave us the exact same thing. If you turn this on and off, you're not going to see anything here. Now go to your uh, burn tool. I usually start with my burn tool. I set it to mid-tones with an exposure of about 15% or 16% if you want some weird arbitrary number. Now I also have a, a Wacom tablet so I uh, make sure that these settings are on. It just uh, it basically it's, it's a pen pressure thing. You know, The pressure of my pen is going to be the uh, what effect I get. So I'm going to start with my burning and I'm going to what I'm, I'm going to burn here is just these areas of the trees over here. Now because I set it to 16% it's only going to burn 16% at a time so if I want to um, burn it uh, or sorry 15% 16 was our arbitrary number if I want to burn it a little bit more I'm going to have to release my pen from the or mouse if you're using a mouse uh, unclick the, the uh, left click button as you're burning and click it again or in the case of a pen you just push it up and down um, and really start to darken those areas up it's only going to do 15 percent at a time so it's a good idea to just kind of paint over those areas with that burn tool and I'm going to hit both sides of these trees over here happy trees and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller by pressing the left bracket key and start painting in these areas over here now I don't really dodge and burn with any true rhyme or reason or passion. I just kind of do what I think needs to look right on the photo. It's a lot easier to see what needs to be dodged and burned on a uh, black and white layer in my opinion because I get to see what's dark and what's light and I get to push and pull the way I want to.
So um, we start to push these areas on this side. I mean, obviously our light source is coming from this direction. So this, this opposite side is not going to be so lit as we see in this HDR photograph here. And you just keep on, keep on. Now, if you want to switch on the fly to your uh, dodge tool, which I'm coming close to that area now, I'm going to press Alt or Option on a Mac and paint with uh, that Alt or Option key held down. Now what that's going to do is it has switched my tools from the burn tool to the dodge tool and I'm free to dodge areas now. now these areas are pretty well lit, you can tell that, so I'm going to go ahead and hit those pretty hard. Now switching back on the fly, release the Alt or Option key and continue to paint and now we are back to the burn tool. So let's see our progress here. If you want to see your progress on the original color photograph, you just go ahead and click the eyeball on the darker photograph the black and white photograph and you can see what you've done with your dodge and burn layer here now some things are looking okay other areas are really just burning the color pretty bad over here and if you want you can just lower the opacity if that helps and increase the opacity back if you're not but you see here we've uh, we're starting to recover some of those areas that should be darker we're starting to get more uh, interest into this photo uh, by doing so it's not so drab. Uh, now I can do the same thing with the clouds. I'm going to go ahead and make my brush a little bit larger. And since I'm on the burn tool, I'm going to go ahead and burn some of these blue areas. Just really kind of hit these just a little bit with my pen tool. I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on there. And that'll just start to help to bring those out. Now, switch to the Alt key. And now I'm dodging. So I'm going to dodge some of those lighter clouds and burn some of the blue and just kind of see what happens here. You know, I'm just kind of, that's how I usually work. I just kind of play a little bit. You know, it's fun. That's what we do. It's not what you tell your wife, though. You say, I'm hard at work. I'm not playing. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and look at it now. So we're getting some color here. We're getting some more contrast here. Um, it's starting to look a lot better than it was before. If you want to see just exactly what your uh, dodge and burn layer is affecting, you can go ahead and press normal on the blending option, and it shows those areas that we've hit here. Uh, it kind of looks like a pretty cool painting, you know? Um, kind of squint your eyes a little bit, and I guess you can see a lighthouse. Change that back to overlay, and there's your difference there. Uh, over here on this side here, with the blue area there, I'm uh, not really liking what's going on there. So if I wanted to fix that because of the burning, what I'm doing with the burn tool is not just burning the, the, the highlights and the shadows, I'm burning all the mid-tones at this point. And some of those mid-tones there seem to be blue. So I can go to Hue Saturation and I can uh, press Control or Command I on the mask and then paint in with white on the areas that I want to be affected, which are going to be over here. Oh. If you press the D key, it'll default to black and white, and you can press X to swap between the two. I'm going to go ahead and hit um, the white. And then, this is all going to come together in a second here. Click on the hue saturation layer, go to the blues, and just go ahead and reduce them. Now, I've brought that area back uh, into the lighthouse that should not be blue. That area shouldn't be blue. It should be um, probably a, a, a darker gray rather than a blue and I can zoom in here and really kind of start to paint those areas out a little bit better and I'm just getting nitpicky now I guess this isn't really about dodging and burning this is more about uh, just fixing up a photograph at this point but you get the picture you know um, Dodging and burning is not just, I guess it is about dodging and burning, because dodging and burning doesn't just affect your your shadows and your highlights, it also affects the color too, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, you might be burning some of that color in a negative way, like we saw here with the blues. Alright, that was uh, dodging and burning uh, using a uh, grayscale as your base, and just, you know, paint it in plain with it. Uh, I hope this helped you a little bit, maybe give you a little different idea looking at your photographs when it comes to dodging and burning. Again, this is www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and have a great weekend.